Hello, this is Audiobug, and today we are reading some more stories from r slash entitled people. Story 1. I don't organize birthday presents for my entitled cousins anymore. Hi everyone, I had a therapy session today, and she suggested I post a story due to it occurring this time last year. Additionally, this is one of the few times I've stood up for myself around my crazy family. So I have a lot of cousins, the sweet ones, Rebecca, female 12, and Lily, female 7, as well as the entitled ones, Anya, female 9, Frigga, female 6, and Ian, male 4. They all have their birthdays in June to July, so during our annual family reunion, presents are exchanged and opened as it makes it easier than shipping presents abroad and risking damaging them. I plan all the presents in the family, as I love giving gifts, however, for the first, and last time, I was in charge of it with no interference from my mom who was overseeing. So I asked all the children what they wanted, making sure they were age appropriate, worked within the budget given, and the end, each of the cousins had a collection of small presents following their interest, as well as a homemade card. I was very proud of myself because I had been working on this since January. So the day came around. I hand the cousins their gifts and sit down with a cocktail in hand. No one but me and my mom know what the presents are, so I'm excited, hoping I did a good job. Well, the response from my cousins was mixed. My sweet cousins were ecstatic, Rebecca happy stimming, she has autism, as she showed me each of her gifts as if I didn't get them for her. Lily ran around showing me her mother and mine her gifts, but best of all, they all said thank you which, although normal for them, still makes me happy. For my entitled cousins, the reaction was slightly different. Although they were happy, wide smiles, laughter, etc., playing with their toys, eating their chocolate, etc., they said nothing to me and ignored me, acting as if I didn't exist. My mom was super angry, but before she said anything, my favorite aunt spoke up loudly, remember to say thank you, while staring at the entitled cousins. My sweet cousins run up to me and my mom, giving us lots of hugs, kisses, and thank yous, but nothing from the entitled kids. My favorite aunt repeats herself, remember to say thank you, her voice more tense. My entitled cousins look up before this conversation occurs, paraphrasing as this was a year ago. Entitled cousins, where I can't remember which one said what, so general as them said it, I don't know which one said it. OP, me. Favorite aunt? You. Entitled uncle. Entitled cousins, why? Favorite aunt, because you got a present. Entitled cousins, that's stupid. OP, I actually put a lot of effort and thought into these presents, so it's common decency to say thank you. Entitled uncle, they don't have to if they don't want to. After all, you put so much effort in, and that's your problem, not mine. OP, so I won't do it again in the future, as it won't be appreciated. Entitled uncle, you can't do that. Screaming starts. I walk off before I slap someone, and in the background, I hear many a temperate tantrum, including my entitled uncle stomping his foot like a toddler. I did not do presents this year for the entitled cousins this year, and will not next year either. I put a lot of effort into presents, could play to everything's upwards of three months in advance, so not getting a thank you really made me angry. This was the final straw on that holiday. I'm skipping the family reunion this year because I don't want to deal with any of them. Yeah, I can't blame you on that. It sounds like the kids are kind of gonna grow up to like not really know any matters from that uncle. At least they're getting thought like good examples with the other family members. Let's see what the comments have to say. To me, the younger kids not saying thank you is par for the course with kids. They are still young and learning manners. They can only learn what they are thought. My issue is with their parents. When the kids resist to saying thank you, that's when a decent parent steps in and says thanks or give the gift back. Another comment. Absolutely the parent's fault, but you can smirk to yourself in the coming years when their bad parenting comes and bites them in the butt, and it will. Good for you for not giving them gifts anymore. Now there will be more money for their appreciative cousins. You may want to get them one last gift, book on manners, 
There are a lot of children's books on the subject. There's a book I had when I was a kid, many moons ago, called The Thingamajig Book of Manners. Look into it, Opie. Buy each of the ungrateful little kids a copy. Last gift given. Maybe you should get their parents a copy as well. Another comment. Get the parents some parenting books. There should be one called How to Not Raise an Entitled Kid. Yeah, sounds like they probably won't take any advice, but who knows? Maybe they'll change when it starts to come back against them. Next story. Story two. Apparently asking for the neighbors to turn down their music is harassment. I'm at a rural area with all kinds of mixed architecture and residential properties spread around. Property around us gets bought at a god-awful monstrosity of a house gets built. They're a good 500 feet or more away. The city has come in and think living in the country means you can do whatever you want. Never mind to join the sounds of nature. They like to play their music, which is like the worst 80s classic rock wedding playlist, and it's loud. I met the older a few times, which was fine. I sent a text one day, politely asking if he would turn it down. There was no response. I think it actually got louder. Anyway, it's been a couple summers like this. I filed a bylaw complaint once. Didn't matter. I recently I called the guy and again politely asked if he would turn it down a bit. He says it's not loud on his patio, but it cares so much that the system might as well be on mine. I asked him if he would come over to hear what it sounds like. He refused. He says no one could tell him what to do with his music, and he says he's calling his lawyer and accuses me of harassment. Like what? I don't know what to do. Now they will probably behave worse than before. Yeah, probably, honestly. I'm not sure what you can do except maybe like try and see if you can file in there a complaint or something. Let's see what the cons have to say. Measure the decibel level. Based on your description of his attitude, you're likely to end up in a courtroom over this. Having factual data of excessive volume could be your best defense. Yeah, that does sound like a good idea, honestly. More comments. Easy. You be a good neighbor. Contact the local music director slash band teacher, etc. at the local high school and the middle school. Let them know you have a burn with power and you'd like to support young musicians by letting them come out to the country to practice. Give some budding musicians a good place to spend the hours each day developing their skills Give their parents a break from the noise levels and let your neighbor enjoy the sounds of an enthusiastic 11-year-old who has discovered drums. Don't store the equipment there. You don't want to be liable if it's stolen. Make sure the parents sign a release of liability too. But you can really make a couple dozen kids and their families super happy by giving them a safe out-of-house place to practice. Put in a big fan and keep some ice water there. And for the cost of water and some electricity, you could absolutely ruin the life of your neighbor for a bit. If that neighbor complains, they'll look like a complete jerk because they're complaining about kids who are practicing. Do good and get revenge. Edit to add, husband suggested dynamite. Get rid of a stub, get rid of some gopher holes, get big M80 firecrackers to scare off birds, do some target shooting with guns, shoot at imaginary coyotes. I suggest finding the loudest tractor you can and using it to mow along the road at farmer's house in the morning. Husband said to shout out a happy face, on any side your neighbor has. Yeah, I feel like that wouldn't help with the noise levels though. If the goal is to get rid of the noise entirely, fighting fire with fire usually leads to just increasing that amount of fire you're dealing with. Next story. Story three. My brother is entitled not to pay his share of bills. I'm a 21 year old who works full time to keep up with my father's mortgage. He plans on selling the house one day and giving me a share of the equity he gets from it. Problem is, I also have to live with my brother, 24 male, who decides not to pay his part of share at all, and has been unemployed for the past year. He would rather stay home playing video games. He never picks up after himself. Every time I see him, there's zero communication between us. All he does is whistle around the house like he doesn't have a care in the world, then tighten him when he has. Not only do I have to live with him, but also my mother, who doesn't work, has been unemployed for years now due to her medical condition, severe social anxiety, yet she still tries treating me like a teenager constantly telling me to things to do, ways to act, and tell her everything I do 24-7. The only reason I decide to stay here is because it's a three-bedroom house, 
along with a backyard. I love to garden and spend time outside. Worth around 300k selling price. I pay 130 a month on mortgage. One bedroom apartments around my area go for the same or a little more. Yeah, 1300 is not bad. What can I do about my entitled brother not playing a share of anything in the house he's living in rent free? My father's the homeowner, after all. It kind of sounds to me like he has a different deal worked out being prepared, so there's not really much you can do about it. But I wouldn't trust that your dad's actually going to give you the per the house. He might just be taking advantage of you and the brother just is just using the situation to his advantage. Let's see what the cons have to say. You need to sit down with your dad and discuss the issue. If you're splitting the mortgage with your father, then you need to get the equity. Get something in writing that gives you the equity. If he refuses, you could get your own apartment or even your own mortgage on a place. Another comment. Get something in writing that gives you the equity. Something that literally gives you the equity, BOP. A deed of trust or the equivalent of your jurisdiction. Not something informal. Scrawled on the note paper by your dad. Yeah, it really does sound like his family's trying to take advantage of him. Also, kind of like he needs to move somewhere else because if he's still getting treated like a kid when he's an adult, it doesn't sound like a pleasant living situation. Especially since he feels like he's being taken advantage of by his brother too. When really his brother just is kind of taking advantage of their parents more, but also doing it to you by extension. Though it sounds like your dad's just not doing his fair division of the actual rent. Next story. Story 4. Entitled Joe almost gets thrown off my roof. It's been a long time since I had posted anything about Entitled Todd or Entitled Joe. Joe's death kind of hit me hard. First, a quick update on his mom. She's still living in the house by herself. And my three boys, yep, I have three now, and I help her out a great deal. With the loss of Joe, I've watched her frail little flame go from falling down several times a week to standing so much straighter and not falling down at all. She's outside more and seems just a little stronger than she did before. It makes me happy to see this. As I mentioned before, I know nothing about home ownership, so when my AC went out, I'm in August in Phoenix. He immediately came over and looked at it. Unfortunately, it was not an easy fix, and he told me to call an HVAC company to have them look out with it. I called one I had used once before, and they came out right away. Joe, not wanting me to be taken advantage of, probably climbed up their ladder to stand over them while they looked at the AC and discussed the issues. One of them, we'll call him H, as he's the main character of the story, asked if they could help him, and he just stared at them, didn't say a word. I was in my driveway, talking to my best friend, who lives across the street, but also kind of tuned in to what was going on on my roof. I was nervous. Joe's stance was so uncombative, and I couldn't figure out why. H asked again if they could help him, and he said, I'm just here to make sure you don't mess her over. Um, what? I didn't ask him to do that. H maintained professionalism and said, Okay, but we can't have you climbing up here on our ladder. That's a huge liability issue, both for us and for her if something happens. Joe says, I've been a contractor for 30 years. That's nothing. Professionalism slipped a little. Then I'm telling you not to use our ladder again. You don't have permission to use our equipment. Joe huffs a little and stays on the roof. The HVAC guy comes down for a ladder and Joe climbs down to a lower roof at the back of my house, then to an outdoor toy box and to the crowd. He comes through my gate looking smug and proud and walks into his house. H tells me what's wrong with my AC and I give him permission to make the prepares right away. As the other one walks away and starts to gather tools, H stays behind and addresses the situation with Joe. I apologize and tell him Joe helps me out a lot with handyman stuff, and I wasn't expecting him to do that. H asked me to ask him to stay away because he felt uncomfortable with his presence and attitude. About ten minutes later, they climb back on my roof to start repairs. What does Joe do? The maniac comes out of his storage shed with his own ladder and climbs back on my roof to stand over them. I called him, but he either didn't hear me, not likely, 
or was it Dorothy? That sounds about right. I immediately start hearing arguing, and it escalates quick. Silent H has moved from crouching to standing nose with nose with Joe. All on my roof, yelling at Joe. Joe's yelling back, and both men are close to physical contact. Joe threatens to throw H off my roof. At this point, H's partner stands up and says, Try it. We'll see who goes flying. Joe climbs down his ladder, and in the process of removing it, he accidentally knocks stairs over. I rush to upright it. But man, if H didn't literally jump down from my one-story roof into my paved driveway, I go nose to nose with Joe again. I am still speechless and completely unsure what to do. My friend whispers that she's about to call the police because this isn't going to go well. Joe finally walks away and H heads to the work truck. He comes back with a huge tool and heads towards his ladder. Joe comes sauntering back into my driveway with a baseball bat. H is stunned. He stands there for a moment with his mouth open. Joe says, what are you going to do with that tough guy? Guess Strang turned us the tool. H says, fix her AC. What are you doing with that bat? Joe smiles and takes a few steps forward. It is important to understand that at this moment, I am no longer in control of my body. Imagine my surprise to find my body moving in between these two weaponized men and facing Joe. Joe, I really appreciate you looking out for me, but I think it would be best for you to leave and let them fix my AC. It's too hot for this. Joe tries to argue, and I honestly don't remember what he said. I just stared at him. He left. I turned to H and said, I am so sorry. I'll make sure he leaves you alone. He apologizes to me profusely, says he's been acting unprofessionally and should have controlled his temper. I told him it was fine, that I had known Joe a long time and knew how he was. I'd just never seen him escalate like this before. Joe stays away, and H and his partner get my AC up and running. They knock $100 off my bill to apologize for the shaming against. Each called me about an hour later after they left to apologize again. I continued to use their services until H called me a couple of years later to tell me that he was moving to the East Coast with his family and closing his business. He recommended another company, who I still use to this day. Joe has never approached any professional team at my house again. He never talked about it either, and he continued to do small repairs for me when I asked. Yeah, honestly, the story is a little awful. Uh, just really enabling Joe to, like, bully people at your house just because he does small favors for you. And honestly, they should not have, like, taken $100 off your bill. They probably just wanted to avoid a bad review or something, but, like, poor them. They got, like, threatened with physical assault, like, just for working on your driveway, and you did barely anything. In fact, you just really only stepped in, like, at the very minimum amount. Let's see what the comments have to say. Okay, honestly, I know he was your friend, but Joe sounds like he was a jerk. Why were you friends with him? OP respond. Honestly, because he was nice to me, I was feuding with most of our other neighbors. He didn't work, so he had all the time in the world to harass and annoy at least two other families on their street. It was better to be kind to him and stay on his good side than end up on his bad side. He honestly was always kind and helpful and respectful to me. This is the only time he ever scared me. Yeah, that's just not good. Just allowing like someone to do bad things to others because it advantages you more comments. They should have charged you extra for breaking over that dude to best with him. OP. They did was out of my control and I was just as shocked as they were. I had heard of them acting like that from other neighbors, but I never actually seen it before. Well, you knew of it so it was in your control. Other comments. I had a former friend. He did not treat me well because I was lower on his imagined hierarchy. We became best friends with one of my childhood best friends. And my child friend asked me why his new bestie and myself didn't get along. I gave him the short list and he went, huh, well he's never been like that with me. Hugh made complete lack of surprise when one day he was like that with him. Sometimes it's worth going to school on others' experiences. I'm glad it worked out for you. Yeah, I'm glad no one got hurt in that story. Next story. Story 5. Entitled child wants my coke and his mother decided that ordering me to hand it over was a great idea. English is not my first language. So I just flew back from Dubai and had the unfortunate luck of sitting next to an entitled mother and a ruly child. 
as cursing myself because I have had terrible experiences with children and my aisles on flight, so I was already not in a great mood. The flight started out pretty smooth, but things quickly took a turn. This kid, who must have been around five or six, was running up and down the aisle, throwing toys and making a mess. The flight attendants were doing their best to manage, but the mother was just sitting there, scrolling on her phone like nothing was happening, or just telling people to ignore him because he's just a kid. About halfway through the flight, I ordered a Coke. As soon as it arrived, the kids zeroed in on it. He started whining and pointing at my drink, making a scene. Before I knew it, the mother was giving me these dirty looks as if I was some kind of demon for not sharing my Coke with her prince. She leaned over and had a tone that dripped with arrogance said, He really wants your drink. Just give it to him. I was stunned. I mean, it's free, so just ask the attendant to get one for yourself. Well, I declined and suggested she ask the flight attendant for another one. She huffed and rolled her eyes, muttering something under her breath. I'm a petty guy, so I took my sweet time in having a drink while loudly playing music on my headphones. With Spider, I ordered another Coke, but this time her kid tried swiping the drink from the attendant's hand. The attendant scolded the mother in a quiet and stern tone to bring her kid under control, after which the mother huffed and puffed like an out-of-shape marathon runner. For the rest of the flight, she kept glaring at me like I had snitched on her type principal while her kid continued to cause problems. It's amazing how some parents think the world revolves around them and their poorly behaved children. Why have kids when you can't be bothered to parent them properly? Yeah, some people just don't like pay attention to their kids and expect other people to parent them. It's really not good. Well, that's all the stories I have to read for today. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you on another video.